<sighs> crazy, crazy. I've been away for a while. You know, before the video begins, I just want to explain where I've been, why I haven't been posting, and honestly, I've really just been enjoying watching the playoffs. Every day there's an amazing game on, and it feels really good just to sit back, watch the games, not really worrying about what videos to make. I've just enjoyed the playoffs as I did before I started making YouTube videos. I think with the amount of content creators in the NBA community now, you can basically get a video every day, and because there are so many creators that make videos on the exact same topics, I thought I may as well just take a break for a little while, rethink, regather myself, and try and come up with some more creative ideas and think Things that I think will actually happen or things that I believe are going on in the NBA community that need to be discussed that aren't really being discussed. Obviously if you've been subscribed to my channel for a fair while, you know that I'm a Heat fan. And I'm ecstatic with how this Miami Heat team is playing. I mean, we're currently in the Eastern Conference Finals, about to face off against the Boston Celtics, which is crazy. I had a strong feeling that we'd beat the Indiana Pacers pretty comfortably, considering they didn't have a lot of their players like Sabonis and Oladipo isn't at his best. And then the Bucks, I didn't believe we would be able to win the series as easily as we did. I thought that they would at least bring it to six or seven games, but Miami was just too good in the end. And it made sense because of the way that we played against them in the regular season. But because it's the playoffs and the way that the Bucks have played all season, you just expected them to play a little bit better. Miami though was able to shut them down and now they're in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Boston Celtics. They're one series away from the NBA Finals. So am I ecstatic? Absolutely. But what I'm more ecstatic about is the future of this Miami Heat team. And I want to talk about a player that hasn't really been discussed for the Miami Heat. And obviously everyone's like, well, every player's been discussed for the Miami Heat. And that is true. Many Heat fans are pretty ecstatic about this team and the future of what they have, especially with a GM like Pat Riley. I want to talk about James Harden, as I believe the future of James Harden is uncertain in Houston. And I think the Miami Heat make a strong case to make a push for him in the future. So with that said, let's get it started. Obviously, before I get started with the video, I'd really appreciate if you guys could leave a like to show support. Let's aim for a thousand likes for the next video. If you're new around here and you enjoy NBA content, help me out by hitting that subscribe button. All your support is greatly appreciated and I would love if you could hit that like button to help my channel grow. With that said, let's get on with the video. So as previously mentioned, I believe the Miami Heat have four current options that most Heat fans believe they will target and most NBA fans believe they have an opportunity to get. Those four are Victor Oladipo on a one-year contract that ends in 2021, Joel Embiid on a three-year contract that ends in 2023, Giannis on a one-year contract that ends in 2021, and Bradley Beal who has a contract extension that hits and he'll be a free agent in 2023. Joel Embiid and Bradley Bill are 2023, Giannis and Oladipo are 2021. Joel Embiid and Bradley Bill will most likely have to be a trade. Giannis and Victor Oladipo will most likely be signed during free agency, although Oladipo will probably be on the trade block this offseason for the Indiana Pacers, where the Miami Heat may look to trade for him this offseason. It's pretty obvious why these four players are mentioned, but if it isn't obvious to you, I'll quickly break it down. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, the process hasn't necessarily worked, and his ties with Jimmy Butler, plus his subliminal messages throughout this season, speaks to the Miami Heat culture, and it seems like Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid would one day like to team up again, and it could be Miami. Bradley Beal, despite being a great player for the Washington Wizards, an all-star caliber player that is able to win a game off his own shot, he isn't the player that fits well in Washington because he doesn't have any other pieces around him to make a playoff push. Obviously, a player as great as Bradley Beal makes many teams interested in Beal, and he is a great fit for this Miami Heat team if they can orchestrate a trade in the future. Giannis is obviously a main piece that the Miami Heat have been targeting for years now and he's obviously one of those players that is on the move if the Bucks are not able to compete for a championship in the next year. People seem to forget that he is a free agent in 2021 and he isn't a free agent this season, which means the Bucks have a final chance at bringing Giannis some help for the future. And of course Victor Oladipo, he's had links to Miami for years now and he's obviously not playing as well as he once did because he is coming off injuries and Miami seems like a good fit for Oladipo in terms of the way he plays. He fits perfectly in the Miami Heat rotation as he's a good defender, a good outside shooter. Plus he's also on a one year contract which means the Indiana Pacers can get something for him if he decides to go into free agency in 2021 where they could lose him for nothing. So that's why I believe in this next year, Oladipo is the number one target for the Miami Heat. 
In saying that, I believe a lot can happen in the next year, and I believe that James Harden is a piece that the Miami Heat should target, and this is why. Realistically, the Houston Rockets have another year to win a championship in my opinion. They've tried every year, and they just haven't been able to get over the hump. They obviously are playing in a tough Western Conference, which has the Golden State Warriors who've eliminated them in the past years. Next year, the Golden State Warriors are returning, and the Warriors are returning with a top draft pick, meaning they can trade that draft pick away and acquire another asset to pair up with Andrew Wiggins, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green, potentially trade Wiggins away, who knows what they'll do, but they're back to being the Golden State Warriors next season, which is also scary because that means the Rockets will have to face the Warriors, the Lakers, the Clippers, the Nuggets, and whatever other team emerges in the Western Conference. You know there'll be another team that will always make a push in the Western Conference because it's so stacked, which means the Rockets will need to make a move this offseason just to compete in a Western Conference. In my opinion, I compare the Houston Rockets to the Bucks if I was looking at both teams in different conferences. The Bucks are in the East and basically have one more chance to get Giannis some help before he goes into free agency. The Rockets, although James Harden is on a three-year contract that ends in 2023, I believe he's one more year away from demanding a trade simply because of the mental battle of being knocked out in the semi-finals, conference finals, and all that in a tougher Western Conference when you have the opportunity to join the Eastern Conference, which is number one, easier to win, and secondly, you have a chance to redeem yourself as one of the greatest players of all time when he's won a single MVP despite finishing top three on multiple occasions, and he hasn't been able to reach the NBA Finals as the star player on his team. I mean, you look at some of the greatest players of this generation, LeBron's obviously made it to multiple finals, Durant's made it to finals, Curry's made it to finals, Harden, based on talent, has the ability to be one of the greatest players of this generation, but if he doesn't make an NBA Finals, and he has the opportunity to make an NBA Finals simply by joining a new team in the East, it does bring up some questions about what he'll do as he is getting older each season, and by the time his contract's up, he will be 34 years old. So these next three years that he's under contract are crucial for James Harden to win any championship. If he was smart, he would look to move to the Eastern Conference if he really wanted that NBA championship. As mentioned, the Miami Heat are one of those teams that could make an NBA Finals push with a superstar on their roster, and James Harden is the perfect fit. You look at him in terms of the way he plays, he fits perfectly in Miami. In my opinion, he fits better than any other player in the NBA currently. He's a player that can score at any point. Jimmy Butler is not going to take shots away from James Harden. In fact, Jimmy Butler will help James Harden more than most players in the league. He's a great defender and he's a willing passer. He's a star that doesn't need to take shots and defensively, he will help James Harden along with a player like Bam Adebayo. He's another player for this Miami Heat team that is still so young and his emergence as a defender helps complement James Harden whose lack of defensive skills has improved but is still not amazing. To have Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder, and Bam Adebayo helping James Harden on the defensive end is what James Harden needs. He's also a better fit than a guy like Joel Embiid or Giannis Antetokounmpo as he can shoot, which is instrumental to keeping this Miami Heat team intact because if they go after Giannis or Joel Embiid who cannot shoot, that means their three-point percentage as the second best three-point shooting team in the NBA will suffer. James Harden doesn't take away what this Miami Heat team currently does and in fact, it helps them even more. So I'm calling this right now before anybody else is calling it. If the Rockets cannot acquire anyone this offseason and they're going into next season with the same combination of Russell Westbrook, James Harden and the small ball lineup with a new coach, the Houston Rockets will be in the same position as they were this year. A good team, but not enough to beat the Lakers, Clippers or Golden State Warriors. James Harden, in my opinion, has one year before he says, you know what, enough's enough in Houston, I'm demanding a trade. By 2021, Miami will still have maximum cap space because they are trying to target Giannis Antetokounmpo. They also have Pat Riley, and if anybody can make the move to get a player and a superstar like James Harden, it would be Pat Riley. He brings disgruntled stars to the Miami Heat and helps them get closer to a championship. So everybody talks about Giannis because he's a free agent, and it does make sense. But James Harden, because of the lack of success in Houston, his age being a factor by the time he becomes a free agent, the Houston Rockets potentially not being able to build a championship level roster around Harden, which means the fit of the Miami Heat, 
and the fit of James Harden are slowly combining by 2021. Will they meet is the big question, but it is a thought to be discussed and shared and that's what I truly believe. With that said, let me know what you think about this. Do you believe that James Harden could be a potential fit for Miami if James Harden becomes disgruntled in Houston? And what do you believe would be a decent trade for the Miami Heat in order to get James Harden if they were to make a trade for him? Let me know what you believe down below. Subscribe if you're new. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. I am out. Peace.